Hi everyone, I'm John from the Corporate Breakout Couple Channel. If you know us by now, you know that we create a lot of videos around retirement and cost of living in different parts of the world. And today's hot topic is about Johor, Malaysia. Yes, that's right. We have done a couple of videos previously about Johor. There's a lot of interest, especially from Singaporeans. So today we have a treat for you. I have my good friend Ross, who is from Johor actually, and he works in Singapore. And he has a huge history behind Johor and Singapore and today we want to siphon out and bring out everything about Johor that we can produce in today's video just for you. Ross, my good buddy, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Welcome. And in case you don't know, Ross and I spent the last 10 years going in and out of JB and having good time, eating great food and going to Mama and well, often leaving our wives behind. <laughs> okay, so let's talk more about JB. So maybe before that, Ross, what is your background maybe for our viewers to know uh, how much time you spend in Johor and Singapore so that you know they know what's your background? Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, thanks for having me here. So um, I have been spending quite a fair bit of time in, in Johor in particular because I was uh, born and bred there. I had my primary school education there and then my family is there, my parents there, my sister, everybody is there. So uh, I've seen quite a fair bit of uh, Johor since, you know, the 80s, the 90s, you know, all the way until now. Um, so after that, I moved to uh, Singapore and spent a bit of time here because I had my secondary school education here. And then uh, after that, you know, traveling in and out of Singapore uh, day to day uh, for school, you know. Uh, and then after that, I moved to KL for my tertiary education before I come back to Johor again uh, to help out on my family business. And then eventually now, right now I'm in Singapore uh, for the past 13 years uh, with my family settling down here. But you know, I still uh, visit Johor uh, a lot because I still have a lot of family and relatives over there as well. Yeah. So Ross, how often does your whole family, they understand you are based here in Singapore now, right? How often do you all go back to Johor? Um, we visit uh, Johor, we go back to Johor from Singapore probably once a month. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, you know, these days it's a bit more challenging to travel to and for uh, um, between JB and Singapore because, you know, of the heavy traffic jam which we all see today. So, uh, yeah, once a month and then you know, we hope to travel there more often because, you know, we find it a bit more uh, relaxed to be in, in JB because, you know, Singapore environment is a bit more fast paced, a yeah. bit more challenging, a bit more, you know, we just want to be uh, in a more quiet environment sometimes. Uh. So speaking about traveling in and out of Johor, I know before pandemic and after pandemic, right now the causeway, the two links actually are very different from before and after. Can you shed some light to our audience? What's it like maybe before and then what's it like now, especially in terms of the congestion and the time taken? Um, I think I think before uh, pandemic, you know, the, the traffic uh, flow in and out of uh, JB and Singapore used to be a bit more manageable. So. Um, what I usually do is that I will monitor the traffic condition um, from the different apps and from Google Maps, from the applications that we see, uh, you know, to determine a suitable time for me to enter JB. Uh, but these days it's getting more difficult because it seems like, you know, especially the past two months during the school holidays period, uh, uh, the traffic condition has been pretty erratic. So it's a bit hard for for travelers to go in and out of JB Singapore uh, that, that much as compared to the past. Um, but hopefully we, we, we hope to see some ease of traffic in the coming months, you know, after the school holidays. But it, it seems like these days travelers are more, more savvy. And then, you know, uh, hopefully with the RTS, and all that uh, mm. coming up in the next two years, uh, things will get better. Mm. Yeah. So roughly last time pre-pandemic, how long does it take? Because I understand you stay in the northeast of Singapore, right? Yeah. And you go in via the Woodlands uh, yep. checkpoint. Yep. So last time before and now after, how long does it take? Um, I think during good days um, from northeast of uh, Singapore to JB, probably take me less than one hour. I would say wow. good times maybe between, you know, 40 to 50 minutes there wow. about. End to end? End to end, wow. yes, I'm talking about end to end. So, um, but but these days, uh, I hardly see that kind of duration from my app already. So it usually will take me at least uh, one and a half to two hours uh, on, a, on, a, good on day. a good day. So the good day definition has already changed. In the past, it used to be 40, 50 minutes. Now it's like one and a half to two hours, end to end. 
Um, but of course, uh, I say end to end in the sense that in Johor, my 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 Johor residence is not too far away from the causeway, and you know, uh, but it is still the causeway itself would easily take out about you know one hour, one hour plus of the whole journey. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ross, I understand you work both in Malaysia and also in Singapore. Yeah. So can you share with our audience what's your working experience like in both countries? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, as what John has mentioned, Malaysia and Singapore context. So um, in Malaysia, I would say that the working environment as well as the business environment is uh, slower paced. And then, you know, um, but but there's a good and bad to it. You know, in terms of uh, work-life balance, I think over there you can strike a better uh, a balance, you know, you, you don't feel so much pressure in terms of uh, working, you know, doing things. Uh, but at the same time, the, the I would say the bad part of it is that, you know, you, you tend to get things done uh, slower. You tend to get things done not as fast as you can be over here in Singapore. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, because of uh, uh, how Singapore is today in terms uh, of its global position, it's a regional hub, it's an international hub for a lot of MNCs. You, when you're working in Singapore as compared to Malaysia, you tend to have a lot of international exposure. You, you, get, uh, you can have a lot of uh, gain, you can gain a lot of working experience working with different group of uh, mm -hmm. demography of people and then you get to learn and uh, um, pick up a lot of uh, good traits from all these people. So I would say in Malaysia, you probably can, but then the, the chances of that would be, would be less likely because there isn't as much presence of MNCs over there. Having said that, if you ever have a chance to work in the bigger corporations and all that, you, you will allow you to, to, um, to have a different thinking process, uh, uh, working SOPs and understanding of the, the business environment better. So I would say that, you no, know, there's pros and cons. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say which one is better and which one is not, but then uh, you just have to find one sweet spot that allows you to grow and, you know, uh, grow and experience yourself to be where you want to be, yeah. So what are the biggest changes you notice pre and post pandemic for Johor? Um, if I recall pre pandemic, I think uh, in those days, uh, the businesses in, in Johor, I wouldn't say is flourishing. I would say that, you know, uh, it is vibrant, but then business environment is challenging, but then yet uh, people are still able to make a, a decent living over there. Um, but but I can see that the cost of living, the inflation, it starts to pick up because, you know, um, it could be due to the, the currency strength of the Ringgit Malaysia as well as, uh, you know, different things that come into play, you know, the, the income, uh, the GDP of the states of the Malaysia. So um, I think from there, I start to see that, you know, things can be uh, a bit more challenging already. Um, so post, uh, uh, what happened is that when I first go back to, went back to Malaysia again, you know, after the borders has opened, uh, what, what shocked me was that, you know, I, I start to see a lot of uh, shop houses, uh, vacant shop houses for sale, for rent, you know, across the street. It, it wasn't used to be like that. You know, in the past, a corner shop houses there, it's always taken, it was never vacant. But then when I went back, you know, when, after the borders opened, post pandemic, mm. uh, I start to see this, you know, not just in Johor, also in different parts of Malaysia. And that, that starts to worry me. Um, but, you know, the, the good thing is that, you no, know, lately when I start to go back again, um, I see that, you know, the shops uh, uh, occupancy rate starts to pick up. I, I hope that this can also continue to benefit the, the, the local people. I hope that the business will continue to improve. You know, now we are still in a recovery mood. So, um, yeah, but, you know, I, I can see that it, it is a, it's, a, it, it's a bumpy route. So um, hopefully everybody, you know, the government, you know, uh, the people, the business environment, everybody can, can you know, work out their best. You know, to, can I to can, can I say the the yeah. Singaporeans have a very uh it's quite an important part of these changes that you are seeing, whether it's during pandemic where maybe the Johor business has suffered and then post pandemic the recovery because of the the influx of Singaporeans again. Uh yeah, I would say that you know the the. 
the influx of the tourism from uh, or, or the visitors from Singapore uh, do play a huge part in benefiting the the local business environment. And you know, um, we definitely welcome more Singaporeans in in Johor. But uh, please, you know, as as how you travel overseas, do always take good care of yourself, your family members. Always watch out for each other, and uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's important for this trend to continue um, because, in terms of the domestic business environment, uh, um, you know, it, it's it's still it's still striving, or can I say, you know, it's still trying to get better with the help of the tourism. You know, it can definitely speed up, uh, in a sense. Yeah, so so that that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah, so Singaporeans, please go visit Johor and give Johor more business, right? <laughs> Let's talk about cost of living. Right now in Johor, what is it like in terms of food, uh, maybe groceries, you know, the, your daily necessities? What's the cost of living like in Johor? Yeah. Um, John, maybe let me just put into one simple perspective or illustration. This is uh, what my mom has always joked about, joke about to me is that, you know, in the past, I would say maybe 10 years before, uh, if you go to a grocery or you go to a supermarket when you spend 100 ringgit, you can probably have a full truck of, you know, trolley out from the mud. But then nowadays when you are, you know, paying 100 ringgit, you can't even get, you know, half of the trolley filled now. So wow. that, is, that is what we are seeing today. And for myself, I would say that, you know, in the past, um, I, I would look forward to a shopping trip, you know, in the supermarket and all that. Um, compared to now because you know I tend to find prices more competitive but of course I can't buy everything there because um, some of the things are not as well stocked over there unfortunately because you know of the demand and all that um, but these days I tend to buy lesser things uh, in Johor because I realized that the price uh, um, uh, I would gap. say price, price gap, gap yep. yeah, it is a lot more closer than what it is in Singapore right now. So wow, there are, there are things that you know it is still worthwhile to have a look over there, but there are things that actually you can still choose to to get it here in Singapore already because you know the gap, as what John has mentioned, is is close enough. But there are of course other more more interesting things to look at in in Johor. You know there are places of interest. There are different um, you know food food choices that you can have over there. They are very interesting people, you know, that you can explore, you can meet. Yeah, so I would say overall, I would see the price uh, increase over there in terms of food, in terms of grocery sh shopping and all that to increase by at least easily 30% to 40%. Yeah, in, in the past when I have my coffee in the coffee shop, it probably cost me two ringgit. That is pre-pandemic. I think right now I need to pay at least, you know, three ringgit. Wow, three ringgit there about, which is a, at least a fifty percent increase already, and I have, I think I have paid four ringgit before mm. for just a copio or four ringgit fifty. So uh, actually, uh, that is like closer to KL price, you know. Because yeah. in Penang, we are still looking at around two. That that's where Fan and I are residing. Around two two fifty ringgit for coffee, whereas in KL now it's closer to four ringgit. So I think JB is kind of in between mm. the two cities, right? Yes. Yeah. What about properties? I think that's something that a lot of our viewers really like to know about. What do you what do you think about properties in Johor right now? Um, I think the property segment in JB is getting more exciting these days because of the interest in RTS, you know, um, and you know, a lot of us know that RTS is going to be ready or is or is target to be ready in two years, three years time. And if you are in JB these days, you see that there's a lot of root works going on everywhere. They are building the depot at, you know, uh, in the Johor town, you know, you can look at the Bukit Chaga area, you can look at, you know, uh, the whole stretch is, is, is a bit uh, it's a bit in a mess because of all the roots and stuff. There's a lot of rewrite and all that. But then um, I think for the benefit, for the long-term benefit of uh, uh, both Malaysians and Singapore, uh, this, is a, this is a good move by both parties um, to have it done. Um, in terms of property segment, I think that, you know, the Johor property is getting a lot more interest these days. Um, in the past, you know, it, 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 we were facing a situation where there's a lot of supply, you know, uh, um, in, in the Johor market because, you know, as you know, Johor is actually not that small. Johor is actually quite big, you know, the West 
the west side and then the, the east side of Johor. So, um, but I, I think I think the investors, uh, they, they got to be a differentiation between the investors as well as the own stayers. The, the, whether you're buying for own stay or you're buying for mm. investment because for investment, if you're buying, you're going into a, a real estate um, segment, uh, investor can actually buy anywhere. It, it may not be in Johor, it can be in different parts of the world. It can be in Singapore, it can be Thailand, Philippines, you know, all, all over the place. But as own stayers, I think you have to assess and evaluate different factors um, in terms of amenities, healthcare, the, the transportation and all this, not just for yourself, for your family members as well. So um, I would say in Johor, one key thing is that, you know, you have to think for yourself, We'll be driving, we'll be owning your own transport, we'll be taking public transport, we'll be taking you know, Grab and all that. So you have to evaluate where will you be spending most of the time. Will it be at home? Will it be elsewhere? Will you be commuting to other parts of Malaysia or, or Johor? So that that will put you in a better position to decide whether, you know, where to buy, what to buy. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of property that you can look at in Johor, but then at the end of the day, you know, are you buying it for investment? Are you buying it for own stay? And what is the main objective? Why do you want to buy that? Is it for holiday? Mm. Is it for own stay? Is it for retirement? It looks like there is a very exciting period for Johor with the current Sultan of Johor going to be the next Agong. And there's a lot of collaboration activities between Johor and Singapore and a lot of interest from foreigners, especially Singaporeans who, who want to, who wish to relocate, work and live or retire in Johor. And for the benefits of our viewer, what are your, some sharings and your thoughts about this? Um... I think I think definitely Malaysia and Johor welcomes uh, um, all walks of life to spend time in Johor. I would suggest um, you know it depends depends how well you know Johor JB because you know Johor is quite big. JB itself is you know the city the town of Johor. Um, I would advise those who don't know much about Johor or JB yet to you know visit spend more time there. Uh, you know, not just a day trip, probably spend a few more days, a week mm. or so if you can, um, to walk around, to experience how people live, um, how people spend their time, um, where, they, where they eat, where they shop, um, you know, how do they, how, where, where they find their medical supplies, you know, things like that, that, that affects our daily life. Um, so, as what John has mentioned earlier, to deep dive uh, into you know, the, the life, the livelihood, the life being of the people over there is to get your hands dirty and just be there, live there. And, and then don't look, as, don't look at yourself as uh, uh, there for holidays. Look at yourself, just imagine yourself settling down, living there, spending the next, imagining yourself spending half a year there or so. Um, and then, you know, coming to that point, you slowly realize, you know, whether that is the right, right place for you because, you know, everywhere is different. Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Johor, uh, even different states in Malaysia also, you know, the people live lives differently. Some, some drive, some don't drive. So it depends if you're driving, how do you spend your time? If you don't drive, you know, how are you going to allocate your time to do different errands, mm -hmm. you know, to run different chores and all that. So the, the best thing, the best thing, honestly, is to just go there um with empty mind um take care of yourself uh take care of your safety well your well-being and then you know um behave normally um be observant and you know i think you'll be you'll be good yeah Ross, final question for you, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers want to know as well. Would you advise a foreigner, especially a Singaporean, to buy or rent a property in Johor? Um, I think regardless of where you buy, uh, in terms of property, real estate, you know, uh, it's, a heavy it's a heavy investment wherever you are buying. So it's, I, I think it's a good idea to probably just rent there for some time to understand the local context, the environment and see if it suits your lifestyle and the, the, the things that you are looking at. Um, it's best if you can also bring along the environment to also let them experience, you know, um, how, 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 how it's like to live there. Because at the end of the day, you know, you may not be spending there, you, you may not be spending time there alone, your family could visit you or you could be living there with your family. So it's important to have everybody there to share their thoughts and feedbacks. 
you know, whether this is a good place for you. But for me, if you ask me, I would think that renting is a good idea because, you know, it's easy to rent here, you know, if you don't feel like, you, you know, you do, if you don't feel like living there, you can always move around. But buying down, buying, buying and paying down for investment property or be for your own state, or uh, whatever the case is, you know, you, you can't just exit mm. straight away. You cannot just buy and then sell tomorrow. For renting, it's a lot more convenient and it allows you to flexibility to, you know, to move around. So I would suggest to, to probably rent first, John, to answer your question. And then, you know, you can think about the buying later. So once you rent and you spend more time there, you, you understand the geographical location of the place, you know, where is a better spot to, you know, your favorite uh, food joint, where's your, where's your, which location is more convenient for a child, for a family, you know, whether it's there uh, nearby medical hospitals around, you know, this kind of thing. So it, it's good to, to rent, just stay there for a while to understand the, the dynamics of the, the living environment there before you decide further. Anyway, as a, as a Johorian, I would say that, you know, th there's plenty of properties that you can consider over there. So take your time to choose. Don't rush into it, you know, and then you know, make your money work for you. There you have it guys, you have heard the thoughts of a true blue Johorian. Now I'm interested, what are your thoughts on Johor in terms of the cost of living, in terms of the causeway jam, in terms of property, whether to buy or rent? Let us know below and also any burning questions you have for us. Otherwise, Ross, thank you for your time for today's interview. And guys, as always, do like this video, share and subscribe to join our channel and see you in our next video. Do you know we have an awesome community of like-minded people who want to win in life called the Breakout Community? Click on the link below to find out more and join. See you there!